Namaskaram, Vanakam, and welcome everyone to today's video. Just like I promised you in the last one, this one is probably going to be a short video as well because this is, uh, I'm just kind of attempting to do the voiceover recorded footage style video and I have a lot to learn because I have not recorded as much footage as I had thought I did. But I still wanted to share this with you today because I am upgrading and updating my Puja Mandir. Now, I've had a Puja Mandir or a, a shelf for my deities since the day I got my first deity. And it has really been an important part of my spiritual journey and my practice and growing uh, as a spiritual person. And for a long time, my Puja Mandir was either a small table set up in a corner or on a shelf. I live in New York and space is very tight. So I never had like kind of the traditional home and deers that I see for sale on Amazon or on Etsy or any of those websites, some of these beautiful creations. But I knew that I didn't have the space for one of those, but I did want a cabinet, something where I could shut the door in the evening, open the doors in the morning, that type of thing. So I ended up getting off of Amazon this media tower that I'm going to convert into a Puja Mandir. Now I'm going to include links to everything that I talk about in this video in the space below for anybody interested. Now this particular media cabinet was about 42 inches tall at its width, at its widest point it was 18 inches, but really in the cabinet space it is about 16 inches give or take and its depth at the widest point was eight inches on the top and on the bottom but in reality where we store the deities it's about six inches so it's very small but it's perfect for apartment living it is exactly what I was looking for now this was an interesting experience because I have never constructed a piece of furniture on my own so I thought I'd give this a go and I did fairly well. There were some things that I absolutely could not do. So my best friend, he helped me out with it, especially like nailing on the back and that sort of thing. And the project that I was told would only take 40 minutes, three hours later, it was built. It wasn't good enough to stop there though. I wanted to do some decorating. So I got some acrylic pens. So paint pens in silver, gold, and rose also white. On the inside of the Puja Mandir, I wanted to have the symbols of Sri Vaishnavism, uh, the Shanka, as well as Sudarshan. Unfortunately, because it's kind of like a cheap textured back, it didn't come out so clear. I did my best, but I decided to stop after the Sudarshan just because I think I might actually end up putting up a cloth at some point there or some different backdrop. I wasn't super happy with it. However, on the outside, I decided to do a very simple Rangoli design on the front. So I did lotus petals along the top and then suns down the door. And I might add to this later. I, oh, I also painted with the pen one of the rim, the front rim at the top in gold. I might add to this later but I really wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. And the last thing I wanted was a cabinet that just looked like I drew all over it. So I wanted to keep it simple and clean. Inside of the cabinet, I used battery operated LEDs that have a remote control. They come six to a pack. I ended up using four in the cabinets and using two elsewhere in the apartment. And the LEDs, there's lots of different settings. There's different light settings. You can make it flash, I don't like the flash settings, but you can also change the color. There's, I believe, 16 different colors that you can choose from, which is really nice to set different ambiance, different mood, depending on the time of day or what we're celebrating. So here it is, the finished for now product. It's not completely done yet, but I'm really happy with it. You'll notice at the top, I have two, two crystals of mine sitting where typically there would be a Gopurum. I know there's lots of great videos out there showing you how to use finials as goporms, but I decided not to add any because I'm waiting until we go to India in Tiramala in some of the shops, you can get a replica of the goporm from Tiramala and I'd really like to get that to place on top. So 
hopefully India will be open for tourism in January and I'll get to go and make my pilgrimage and also be able to bring one of these home. Otherwise, there might be an updated video where I take the finials and turn them into a gopur. For those of you who are curious what's in my puja mandir, on the top shelf I have Sriman Narayan in the middle, I have Lord Venkateshaya on the right hand side and Mother Lakshmi on the left. Then on the next shelf I have Ganesha and Hanuman and then the third and fourth shelf are mainly for storage. On the third shelf I have most of the smaller implements I use for puja. So uh, the Kailash pot, Archiman cup, um, I have a small punch dia for Arti uh, and some spoons and that type of thing. Now on the bottom shelf I keep two large talis four pujas as well as I have some books that are important to me including a wonderful translation of the Bhagavad Gita from Dr. Jeffrey Armstrong which I'll link again below. I also have down there incense. I have a lovely room spray that I got from haristore.com and it smells of rose and it's fantastic. It's a nice alternative to using incense if you don't want to burn incense for whatever reason. I will use both but I don't like to burn incense all of the time, so sometimes the spray is a nice alternative. I also have a small bottle of Ganga Jal, of Ganga water, for blessing and cleansing that I keep in there as well. And on top, I have my picture of Krishna. So this is my Puja Mandir as it is now. There will be upgrades and updates, uh, hopefully once I come back from India, and I might do a, a more detailed tour of that later. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Hari Om.